Good morning. And welcome to our parish of St. Matthew, the Evangelist, and the Church of St. Andrew on this Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. This morning, as well as all Masses for Holy Week, will be live streamed. To keep our space sacred, I ask you to please turn off or silence your phones. Also, please keep your masks on properly at all time, covering your nose and mouth. When receiving Holy Communion, keep the six-foot distancing following the floor signs. We're not able to sing as a community right now, but I will be happy to sing the Mass parts for you. And as a reminder, please do not leave your palms behind at the end of Mass. Let us stand. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking on the form of a slave, coming in human appearance. And found human in likeness, he found, excuse me, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed upon him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, you say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. And again, Pilate questioned him, have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to to ask him, 
to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, weaving a crown of thorns, and placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting on him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against them read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi. Lama Sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes down to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. <clears throat> the
the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to God. And when I think of the story of the Passion, there were times that it seemed to me at least that it was a random act. That perhaps had he not gone to the Garden of Gethsemane, this would have happened. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. But in fact, the Passion was not a random act. We hear Isaiah prophesy about it, telling us of the servant in the servant song that this would happen. When you piece together the gospel, you see that they were building up to this. They were trying to find charges against him. We also see from Pilate that he went with the popular desire as opposed to doing what he knew was right. And we hear in Paul talking about this that Jesus knew full well as the Son of God that he would humble himself, giving himself up to death on a cross. Last year probably was one of the most odd holy weeks of my life. It was definitely the oddest of my 22 years of priesthood. This year, we're back together, though limited. But like last year, doing it virtually, and this year, doing it with people, we remember, we don't reenact, but we remember the different events of that week in history. On Thursday, we'll recall the Lord's Supper, where he instituted the Eucharist. On Friday, we recall again the Passion. where he humbled himself to death. At the Easter Vigil and on Easter Sunday, we rejoice in the resurrection. This year we will baptize three adults and receive one adult into the church and confirm them. Some might say we're back in business, but we never were out of business. One of the beauties of last year's Holy Week was though we recorded the major liturgies ahead of time, myself, Father Hal, Father Theo, Father Jean, and Father Romain would gather each night of the Triduum, just the priest of your parish, 
and celebrate together for you. So I invite all of you and those who join us virtually to solemnly remember the acts of Christ in those last few days of his life on earth. To recall that this was no random act but an act of love for you and I. An act of love from God so that we can have life eternal. It was the greatest love that anyone has ever shown in all time. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Jesus turned to his father in his final moments on the cross, just as he had throughout his life. And so we too turn to God our Father in our need, secure in the knowledge that we, that we are heard. For the church that recounting the passion and death of our Savior will deepen our faith and strengthen our resolve to bear witness to the awesome sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that leaders of nations might choose to settle differences peacefully, rejecting the alternatives of war and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. That all society may respect the basic dignity of all members of humanity from birth to natural death. And for the most vulnerable and those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who will be baptized at the Easter Vigil, especially our own catechumens, Alexander, Taylor, and Vincent, and for Jackie, who will be welcomed into the church this Easter, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us, that we may always be willing to help our family members, friends, neighbors, and strangers carry their crosses, knowing that the Lord recognizes their weight and is always willing to share our burden. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts.
and for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. For the people of St. Matthew the Evangelist Parish, let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> our Mass intentions for the week, John Paul Ciotti, Sr. Our funeral celebrated this week, Cosmo John DeVellis, Stephen Roy, Philip C. Farmer, John Keroy, and Barbara O'Brien. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. God of strength and compassion, and your Son cried out to you from the cross. We cry to you as we carry our crosses and assist each other with theirs. Listen to our prayers we make and grant them accordingly to your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the laws of the Holy Church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death was washed, has washed away our sins, 
and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The four signs maintaining six foot distancing. At the minister, outstretch your hand. The host will be placed in your hand. Step aside, lift your mask, consume the host, replace your mask, return to your pew. If you are not receiving Holy Communion, you are asked to rise and follow your pew out, then circle back so that no one is climbing over anyone in the pew. Thank you for your understanding and your cooperation during this pandemic time.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There will be additional time for confessions this week, on Tuesday from 6.30 to 8 at St. Andrew Church. The collection on Good Friday is for the Holy Shrines in Israel, and Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday's collection is for the Clergy Health and Retirement Trust. Leaving today, please place kneelers in the down position and please exit through the front side doors of the church as there is one directional flow out of the church because of COVID-19. After Mass, if you can assist us with disinfecting the church, please meet us at the front doors of the church where you entered. Today was the first of our live stream Masses for Holy Week, uh, and all went well. It was kind of our test run. We're very, very grateful to Chris Fennell for his work uh, in live streaming. live streaming on Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil. We will be recording the Easter Sunday Mass, uh, and we um, encourage you all, uh, whether you're here with us or whether you're joining us from home, uh, to journey this week with us and with Christ as we see the love that God has for us, that he would give his son for us. Oh, and we'll also be live streaming at Easter morning at 10 a.m. <laughs> Past is always the last to know. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.